before we get into what I know will be a really fun and juicy conversation, I want to just share just a little bit more about you to the ladies sure. and uh, officially introduce you. Uh, Greg rules the dating advice genre, having sold a quarter of a million books. I mean, come on, Greg. Woohoo. But <laughs> that's so impressive. He's Thank a multiple number one best selling author, dating coach, and life coach. Being both gives him an incredible advantage with the people he touches. He helps women succeed in both their dating and everyday lives and encourages his readers to contact him through his books and get answers for free. Greg has a motto which is, build yourself and he will come. And we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Um, you can see some of Greg's many books in the background there behind him, and uh, I'm just amazed at what you're doing out there, Greg. So welcome back. So happy you're here. Thank you very much. And you know, I want, I want to say, um, I want everyone listening to thank yourself for actually taking the time to reach out to pros like Michelle and I and, and really give yourself a pat on the back. I, you know, I know this whole dating thing it, it is tough, especially, you know, when you're, when you're over 40 and, and it can lead to frustration. But the fact that you're, you know, you're reaching out to pros and, you know, some things you'll like about what we say, some things you might not. But it's all good, and I find sometimes it's the one thing that you'll grab from one of these interviews. You know, maybe a lot of things you won't, but it might be a one thing, and that could be the, the thing that domino, dominoes you into doing all the right things, getting excited about it, and ultimately finding, you know, a great guy. So, that said. <laughs> yeah, good. thank you for saying that, Greg, yeah. because I think that's so important. Um, the fact that you're here speaks well of you and what you want in your life and your love life. And it's true that even just one idea or one nuance of something can make a huge difference in your overall experience with dating and men. So I'm right. so glad that you, um, that you mentioned that. Yeah. So Greg, I'm curious, why have you chosen as your theme, build yourself and you will come? Okay, so what, what I've found is it's very easy for us to spew all this information to, to women. Um, you know, go meet a guy, you know, do this, do that. But if you don't have the confidence or you don't believe there are good men out there or you're jaded from your past relationship, you, you know, you just can't do that. And, and you might have all the confidence in your everyday life. But if you've been, you know, for example, married for 10 years, 15 years, five years, whatever, you know, you've given up on a lot of things that you used to do. Your hobbies and passions just, you know, went away because you're taking care of kids, you're taking care of your husband, and you kind of lost yourself a little bit. And because of that, I don't think it's a good idea to go right out there. You know, you're almost putting the, you know, the cart before the horse. There needs to be a time where you settle back in and you start to rediscover yourself, you know, build yourself is what I, you know, what I say on my website. Um, and that means, you know, who am I all over again? You know, what did I used to enjoy? Um, you start to take what I call life inventory. And this is sort of the dating coach in me. You know, you start to think about, you know, what are my values, my beliefs all over again? And and it's really a gut check because that person in your life, you know, may or may not have led you down a, a road that, you know, you didn't want to be on. And so it's time to, to get back at it. And this could take, you know, it's, it's going to be more than a month. It's going to take three months, six months, a year. But when you do it, now things just, you know, like I say before, domino into place. And it, it just, you know, I always talk about having a great story. And we all have a great story, but a lot of it has been put on a shelf because of, you know, our, you know, past relationship or, or what have you. So it's time to get that story again. And, you know, maybe you used to be in the diving or photography or whatever, but that's part of your story. And maybe your story needs a little shoring up, you know, well, this is the time to do it. And when you start to, to build yourself, you by default start to attract a, a man. And, and think about it. You know, I, I remember being single and going out on a date. It's it just like, I, 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 
I dated a, a lot of beautiful women and, 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 and the looks <laughs> didn't do it. You know, it's like you, you look at this woman and a man looks at a, you know, a woman and a woman looks at a man and, and they say, you know, what does she have to offer? And when you have a story and it's like, wow, you know, I, I dived in, you know, in Barbados and yada, 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 or I train horses or I can, you know, make, um, you know, um, you know, candles, <laughs> you know, and, but you're passionate about it, kind of like how I am. It, it, it just makes you interesting. And now I, I'm attracted to you. So I always tell women to, to kind of take a break and, and back up and start to concentrate on, on yourself and not the man. The man is the cherry on the top, okay? And if you, if you go after the man too soon, then all of a sudden everything, you're going to look for validation all the time. And, and your happiness is going to be determined by how you're treated, treated by him. And if we can get you into a phase where you're happy, because basically happiness is just following your beliefs, you know, and, and values and pursuing your dreams. And when you do that, everything changes. You know, now the pressure is off to meet a man. You're going to meet a man because you're doing kickboxing, you know, or you're, you're going on vacation with your girlfriend, you know, you're, you're a single wing woman, um, you know, and, and you're getting exposure. And so, so a lot of people just, Go about it, you know, backwards, if you will, Michelle, you know, so mm -hmm. that was a long-winded answer. <laughs> oh, I, lo I love that introduction. And would it be okay, Greg, if we kind of revisit a couple of things that you said yes. there just to highlight them? So one thing that stood out for me was I felt like you were giving the advice that if you're coming out of a long-term relationship or marriage or that sort of thing, rather than just diving right back in and going right out there to try to replace whoever is no longer in your life. It's, there's wisdom in really taking some time for yourself, getting to know yourself, getting to maybe understand some of the things that you learned from that relationship. I mean, I'm, I'm maybe adding a little bit to what you said, but no, you for good reason. Yeah. A little bit? Yeah. And, what happens when you do that? A lot, a lot of times, you'll be in a, a woman will be in a relationship, and and they'll date this type of man, and they will um, there might be contempt. And if they get out there too soon, the pendulum swings, and and they go to it's like okay, I, I dated a couch potato. Now I'm gonna date this guy that you know is like um, you know loves to rock climb, and it was just the opposite. And a lot of times, he's just as bad for different reasons. So you really need to. You know, it's funny, I just put out a bestseller called Night Moves, which is the science of getting a man to fall in love with you. And one of my first chapters is um, I talk about, you know, uh, soybeans <laughs> um, that were all a bunch of commodities. And it's true. It, it, we look at each other almost, you know, we, we look at it and say, what is in it for me? What do you bring to the table? Okay, I, I do it. And women should do the same thing. It's like, what do you bring to the table? Why should I date you? And that's part of what I'm talking about is that great story. It's like, okay, you date me because my financials are in order. I'm a decision maker. Um, I'm a positive person. I'm a busy person. I've got um, opinions on things because I've got that confidence. It's come from being busy and pursuing these hobbies and passions. So. It, it naturally starts to attract a man. And, and then, you know, it's funny, in all my books, I'll talk about challenge and mystery. And, you know, to a lot of women, that's just like, yeah, yeah, philosophical crap. And challenge and mystery is, is, is so easy. It, it, it's because you've got so many things going on, you're mysterious, okay? It's like, I don't even understand how you can volunteer at the cat shelter and then do, you know, kickboxing the next night and you have no time for me. <laughs> and like, <laughs> challenge you know it's like I am born to chase let me chase you at least at the beginning um, I interview older couples and I ask them and the guy says you know I've never caught her <laughs> <laughs> that's cute which is, which is precious you know but challenge and mystery you don't have to work on challenge and mystery you just have to work on yourself and you become challenging and mysterious and you know I, I, I it's perceived equity you know when I say my soybean um, chapter, you know, being a uh, commodity, it's perceived equity. You know, what is your equity compared to mine? And the higher you make you your equity, the more guys you're going to attract. 
And when you meet someone on the same level, because let's face it, you don't want to be dating someone down here. Of course, if your confidence is low, you will date someone down here, and that's not healthy. If your confidence is here, you'll attract and date someone on the same level, and now love becomes so much easier, you know, to, to attract that type of man. Mm-hmm. So it comes down to you, not, not him. He, he's easy, believe it or not, you know, to find in the guy, I always think, and no one's going to believe this, is actually the easier part. It's not the, it can be the fun part too, when you've done these things, you know, because, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I just get excited about, um, you know, working on yourself, you know, first, and then getting the man, you know. Yeah, and I think that's so key because then you're really centered in knowing who you are and you're living this rich, full life. And then, then like you said, having the man is more like just having that whipped cream and cherry on top, so to he's, speak. He's the furry top. prize on the top shelf, but he does not come first. You know what I mean? You got to work yourself up to it. You know, you got to throw the darts first to get that furry prize. Um, but it's just, yeah, I mean, it's just amazing that... Um, you know, that so many people will try to put the, the, the man first. And, you know, it's just it's just not the way, you know, the, the way to do it, you know. Yeah, because you're going to attract a totally different level of person, a totally different kind of person when you're really centered in knowing what you bring to the table and you're living that ritual life, right? Right. And, Michelle, another thing comes into play, too, and it's about boundaries. You know, you don't have to worry about, you know, the questions I get because I encourage people through my books and they'll say, Greg, I met a great guy. When do I sleep with him? She's all worried about, you know, when I should sleep with him. And I'm like, if you're worried about that, then you're not ready for this. You sleep with him when he's proven himself through my series of tests. Okay, but if your boundaries are low because you haven't done you know, the steps you should be doing, then you don't know these answers because your boundaries are low, okay? And then then that, let's face it, there are a ton of terrible guys out there, you know? I mean, it, it's just, you know, they're just you know, millions of them. But I get it. But now you've got to weed them out. And by building yourself, having a great story, you know, having these things in place, now your boundaries are defined. And to me, you know, if I'm a high value guy, I want to see these boundaries. Sure. I might try to, you know, uh, test you and try to sleep with you too early or whatever. But when you say no to a high value guy, that's, that's powerful. That guy is going to want you more. He's testing you too. You know, I always say that phrase, you know, nothing comes without a fight. And that's how guys want to to, um, you know, date their forever woman. There has to be a fight. There has to be um, a chase in my mind. And, and yes, a little bit of a game, but that game gets less and less. And when you know how to play it, <laughs> and when you have to play it, you know, um, you learn, you learn too. But you, a guy just wants to have that. He needs to show, he needs you to prove that you're worth it. And that means you've got to set boundaries and make me make me work hard, you know, and, and that's where people get mixed up. And so many women who just go out trying to find a guy, they'll find one guy and they'll try to mold him, shape him into the guy that they want him to be. You know, she'll be like a horse with, with blinders on and the friends and mom will say, no, he's no good. And, you know, a woman won't care because she doesn't have choice and comparison, which is another big thing in her life mm-hmm. and again by backing up the truck working on you and embracing being single it's okay and then following up um you know with hobbies and passions now all of a sudden you got guys good guys you know that you're not meeting at um you know online necessarily not that that's bad but you're meeting in person that aren't out you know on a saturday night where you don't want to be you know trying to you know um pick up a woman you know so Mm-hmm. It all kind of falls in place, but you've got to get into that mindset. Yeah. Yeah. And those boundaries are a lot easier to maintain when you're really centered in knowing who you are and knowing your own value. And like you said, having that great story, recognizing what you bring to the table. And exactly. I think that's one of the things that makes a woman really stand out from the other women that a man might be comparing her with or have had experience with. 
Right. And think about it this way. Here's a great test to know if you're ready to date. And don't don't get me wrong. I mean, there's always nerves and things like that. But if you're across the table from a guy and you're saying you're looking at him, you're throwing questions out to him, testing him, thinking if he's good enough for you, then you you you're doing it right. Okay. And it shouldn't be the other way around. And so much of the time it is, you don't want to be like, Oh my God, am I making a good first impression? If you're you and you're acting the way you want to act and you're living your life by your values, you don't have to worry about changing who you are. Whereas if your boundaries are low and you've just come out of a 10 year relationship and, and you're beaten up, you know, you don't know who you are. You might, try to be what he, what you think he wants you to be. And, and that just will lead down the same road, which will make, which will make you even more, you know, jaded and the dominoes fall the other way, you know? So I guess this is where, Michelle, this is where the life coach, you know, backing up a little bit. My dad was a life coach when, um, they didn't even have life coaches. So <laughs> yeah. So when I was getting, you know, my, my friends at, you know, six years old were getting fed pancakes and French toast. I was getting served affirmations and goal setting, you know? <laughs> so, so I lived this stuff. I, I didn't even know what was happening to me, but I, you know, I visualized what was going to happen, you know, in my next hockey game. My dad taught me this. Um, meditation is huge. I'm, I'm not good at it, but I'm, I'm working on it. That's my weakness. Goal settings, affirmations, which we always, um, you know, make fun of because that Saturday Night Live skit, <laughs> way yeah. back, dating myself. Um, but if you've got an evil voice that's in your head, and it very well might be, you've got to get rid of it. You have got to counter it. You know, your conscious is, you know, is only a tiny bit uh, part of your brain. You know, picture of it as uh, the keyboard of the computer. It but it dictates everything to your subconscious. If you're feeding your subconscious, I'll never find a man, I'm ugly, I'm overweight, I'm just average, then that's how you will live. And you've got to change that narrative. And when you do, it's an amazing concept. And I grew up on it, so I don't know anything else than it. But now, not only in meeting a man, because that becomes your goal, and, and your goal isn't, I'm going to meet a man, you know, it's got to be smart. I won't get into that. Um, but um, it needs to be, okay, when? Tell me more. You know, I'm your subconscious mind. I want to know when. I want to know what he smells like. I want to know how tall he is. I want to know more things. And when you visualize and you do the things I say, you get rid of that negative Nelly always telling you these bad thoughts and you say, no, I'm going to have a man in my life, a quality man in six months. And okay, so now it's the T and smart, you know, it's time sensitive. And, you know, you, you start to define what he's going to look like. Use your senses, smell what he's going to look like, you know, feel, touch everything. And now you start to, it's like the law of attraction. You know, you really start to do the things, sometimes subconsciously, um, to find that man, you know? And it's just like, and then you can plug it into everything in your life as far as making more money, your career, losing weight, um, you know, whatever you want to do, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't set out to, and I don't want to get off track here, but I got laughed at when, uh, you know, my family, I never read a book. You know, I read Charlotte's Web. <laughs> <laughs> That's a and classic. <laughs> and all my sisters, three older sisters, were readers. And they kind of laughed at me, probably as they should, when I said I want to be a writer and start helping women and write books. And, and I actually used that as motivation, people laughing at me. You know, it was my family, but that's okay. They, they were looking out for me, or my friends too. But that just motivated me. It, it, it made me set the goal. It's like, I'm going to sell a quarter million books. I'm going to sell half a million books. And it's the same thing with women. It, it, it's a plug and play system. And when you're trained to do it, it makes life easy, you know? And, and you can say, if your goal is to meet the man of your dreams, then, then you plug it in, you plug it in just like anything else. And you will get to that goal. You'll fail on the way. But failing is a part of, you know, winning, you know? I mean, look at the Olympics. It's just like, you know, how many people, you know, trying to do some flip or ac acrobatic thing, you know? 
dumped a, you know, 3,000 times before they did. But, you know, they got there because not getting there wasn't in their um, subconscious. It was like, it's going to happen, you know. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we create in our minds first. We create what happens in our lives first. And that powerful, uh, our minds are so much more powerful than we sometimes understand. And when we create that reality in our minds, our minds and our subconscious began working on creating that in our outward world. But yeah. like you said, if we're constantly listening to the negative Nelly, as you called it, yeah. it's next to impossible for our mind to create that. Whatever we're focusing on is expanding and growing. Right. And Michelle, like I'll get, you know, a reader, you know, I, I get like 50 emails a day, you know, from readers in my books. And I had a reader yesterday that said, you know, Greg, I've given up. And, and it, I mean, it was just negative, negative, negative. And, and I came back to her and sometimes a little, um, a little harsh, maybe, but you know, I say, you know, we'll say Jennifer, you know, Jennifer, you're right, you're never going to find a guy. And this is why and I listed the things and she looked at it like, God, I guess I was kind of negative. I said, yeah, it's a, you've convinced yourself that you're not going to meet that guy. So you're not going to try like you should try. You're not going to get the exposure that you're going to, you know, need, need to get. You're going to just, you know, sit there and say why I can't. And, you know, so you do what you tell your mind you're going to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's really as simple as that and you can change it. Yeah. And, you know, when we're little, I always think, you know, you look at a little kid, you know, as a Dunkin' Donuts this morning, this little kid cut in front of him, it was a line, everyone's pissed off trying to get their coffee, and this little kid just ran right in front of him, and he had the wrong donut, you know, it didn't say, didn't care, you know, excuse me, whatever, it's just a little kid, he doesn't know, you know, and walked up and got his right donut, and everyone laughed, and, you know, cute kid, whatever, but you just look at this kid, and he hasn't been messed up yet, you know what I mean, society hasn't told him you know, that that's not okay or, or, you know, you know, later, you know, when he's our age, he'll wait at the end of the line possibly or say, excuse me all the way to the front because he's, you know, he or she is worried about her confidence, whatever. And it just, that's probably not a great example, but, but it, it's just amazing how society just beats the crap out of us. Yeah. <laughs> or, or we might even settle for the wrong donut. <laughs> yeah, right. but perfect analogy. I should have had you do this whole analogy. <laughs> but you're right. You know, you, you want that Boston cream and, you know, you get the, uh, you know, the glaze and you're like, all right, this is all I can do. You know, I'll go back to my seat. Um, but yeah, and, you know, I don't want to get philo philosophical, but this stuff gets me excited. So you really need to, to think about in terms of, of you. And not, not the guy, you know, the guy will come and he'll come fast and you'll be able to weed him out. You'll have the skills to, to check him off. It's like, okay, does, um, you know, he met his, uh, um, you know, I always say you've got to think, um, think with your head and not your heart. And that's one of the toughest things for women to do. And and I, I, and I know it's easy for me to say, and, and you know, not being a woman, I, I get frustrated because it's like, why can't you do that? Because it, it's just so hard, you know, the, the boyish grin or, you know, he, he's very, you know, chivalrous, you know, on the first date or whatever, but you cannot get past that. He has to pass tests, you know, he has to meet your friends and you need to walk away and let your friends interview him and ask him the hard questions. Um, he, you know, he needs to eventually meet your family. You need to meet his friends and see where he is on the pecking order and what are his friends like, you know, are they, do they respect him? Do they not? Are they all checking out women? And I don't care what age, you know, um, are they disrespectful of their wives? Um, you know, so you can learn so much, but you can only learn if you're, if, if you're, you know, using your head and not your heart. And that's one of the most important things, reasons why you don't sleep with a man too early. Because now you've, you've lost it. You know, now your heart is kicked in gear and, you know, you want him to be that person, you know, mm -hmm. realizing. But, yeah. yeah. So uh, I still, thank you for that. And I still want to re refer back to one other thing that you said that caught yeah. my attention right at the beginning. Because I know that for a lot of the women here, uh, they may be a little bit more mature, 40s, 50s, 60s. 
Um, and so they may not feel like physically they're at their peak attractiveness. You know, we're not t forever 21 anymore. <laughs> yep. Yep. And so one thing that caught my attention was you said that you had dated personally a lot of beautiful women, but that it wasn't just the physical, it wasn't just the looks that really uh, fascinated you or kept you around for an extended period of time. And yet, I believe that's such a big perception for so many women. And they feel like they're competing with younger women or more attractive women and comparing themselves constantly in a negative way. And I just wanted you to speak to that a little bit more because I just really feel like the women would appreciate hearing a little more about that from a man. Great, great question. You know, it's funny. I was that single guy for a long, long time, and I was that guy. You know, I'm all, I was, you know, younger, 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 okay? So I can, I can vouch personally for this. I've got a great blog post um, on my website, and I start off like, um, I think my subject line when I send it out to my readers is, um, uh, you know, ladies, you're out of luck. Guys only want to date younger women, okay? And everyone opens this up like, you're right, Greg. You know, it's like, you know, <laughs> they're, they're mad and angry. But I dated, you know, someone very much younger than me thinking that this, you know, was the answer. Like, oh my goodness, how could I not let her move in and, and, and you know, like a, you know, like a trophy wife. And I was immature. I, I thought that that was, you know, the answer. And I was so, so wrong. And the guys, rest assured that the guys that are, that you want to date, the mature guys, the good guys, they are not going for looks. Now, yes, you've got to, you know, take care of yourself. I always, you know, tell women one of the, one of the you know, they don't necessarily want to hear it. But to me, you need to take care of your body. You don't have to be a gymnast. You don't have to be doing P90X or whatever. But, you know, um, you know, you need to take care of yourself. And again, it comes back to that perceived equity. You know, if you're dating a guy, you don't want to date a guy with a huge, you know, belly maybe, or maybe that's fine. But if you don't, then you shouldn't, you know, be, you know, 20, 30 pounds overweight if, if, if that's what you want. Um, but I learned the hard way that, and now, you know, it's like, I, I, you know, I backed up and said, wow. It's like, it's looks are initially important. Um, yes. Okay. And guys will, um, 50 year old guys, me, you know, will still look at the hottest, you know, woman in the room, but that's our animal instincts. It doesn't mean, you know, we want to sleep with them or whatever, but we will look, you know, and, and again, that's part of understanding men, you know, um, if you have the confidence, as long as they're not ridiculous now, there's, there's a line here. Um, but you start to realize, and I realized real quick that it's the personality. I've got to date this woman. And, you know, I'm going to marry her, potentially have kids. And she, she's she got to, you know, the personality has got to be there, you know. And, <laughs> and looks are fleeting, both of men and women, you know. But you start, good guys do not want to date, you know, hot young chicks. Now, we'll have middle, you know, middle age crisis is just um, – is, is just a um, uh, 50 year old guy, you know, buying a yellow Corvette thinking he, you know, he's bored and, you know, thinks he can still date a 20 year old. That's a different story. That's because he's bored. And there are things you can do to not let that happen. Again, challenge, mystery, always have the social life outside of his, you know, and to keep things crazy so he won't stray like that. But that we're starting, we're starting to get in, into understanding men, which is another exciting realm in itself. Um, but to your point, you can't be worried about that. There are a ton of guys. And remember, I'm on the other side, too. There are a ton of guys my age. I'm 50. She said, boss count here. 55 <laughs> going on 56. There are a ton of good men out there that do not want this younger woman. And if they do, and I've got some friends that do, but they are not mature guys. I would not set you up, Michelle, with that type of man, you know. Um, but on the other hand, the guys have the same problem. You know, they've, they're jaded. They just went through something. They're not ready to go out. Um, they're online. They're not doing the things they need to do to meet up with wonderful women like you. So I'm battling on the other side, you know, trying to get people out there. And, 
you say, well, Greg, that's all online dating. And yeah, it is and it's not because online dating is a jungle in itself because there's so many people that, you know, can be virtual and it just messes up the system for the good people, you know? Mm -hmm. So I like to stick to the traditional means um, and supplement online dating if you're ready for it and can, can take it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the way I like to think of it too, is that, and this is something I tell some of the women that I work with that bring up this concern when they say I'm competing with all of these younger women and the men online, you know, are saying they want women in their thirties and they're in their fifties. I always say, you're really not competing with those women because the guy that's looking for the woman in the 30s is not going to choose you. You're not competing with them. And you wouldn't want to be with him anyway because you're just not in a parallel place in your lives. Exactly. And And so it's really not that you're competing with them. And I think that comes about kind of full circle to what we've been talking about here, about you building yourself, you knowing who you are, you having that great story to tell and living that amazing life so that the right person is attracted to who you are in full. And yes, of course, attraction is important. It it would be a lie for us to sit here and say it's not attraction to men. It's it's important to women. I mean, I have so many women that say to me, I have to have attraction. That's essential to me. So we're not saying that chemistry is not important. But it's kind of keeping that in perspective, I think. Exactly. And don't think that I'm just, you know, um, it's easy for women listening, saying, Greg, why do I have to do everything? You know, you remember, I'm on the other side, too. I'm doing these videos, you know, to guys saying, clean up, you know, <laughs> clean up your act, guys, too, you know. Um, you've got to get that. Um, yes, attraction is very important. But you can be doing everything right, but if you don't have the exposure, and it, you've got to get this exposure. And if it's just online dating, you could get, you know, unless you're doing things my way, you know, you're going to get frustrated probably, you know, because you're going to get, you know, people that are just, you know, they're, they're just, you know, not good people. But when you start to get exposure, and, and that'll be one of the first things I do, it's like, okay, tell me, I want you to keep like a log, and sometimes I'll give them a homework, like, you know, boring as it may sound. What are your actual times where you're getting exposure? And by that, I don't mean at work, you know, you're at work and you talk to some guy or whatever, you, you know what I mean, that you thought's cute. No, I mean real exposure. You're going out of your way, you know, to, to, um, uh, it, meet men or put yourself in a position to meet men. Now, if you're doing it my way, you're not out there alone, scary type of thing. You are meeting wing women. You're going to yoga classes first and finding single women, you know, or or meetup.com. There are multiple multitude of ways to do it. Um, But you're meeting single wing women, wing women that are, that are fun and they're there um, going out with your married friends just isn't enough. You know, you can't, they're, they, they, they want to lecture you about, you know, everything you're doing wrong. They want to talk about Tony and, you know, um, whatever. And it, it just doesn't, doesn't help you. So if you concentrate on, you know, a, a, a wing woman, <laughs> you know, it sounds odd and it can be diff- a little difficult in itself. But when you have a fun person that you can go to, you know, Barbados with or whatever, or do things with, now it's just, everything's so much more fun. You work together wherever you go. It's just uh, uh, your, your confidence, um, you know, um, it grows between the two of you and you can help each other out, you know. So, but you've got to get exposure, Michelle. Like, like I say, you can't have one choice in your life. You've got to get out there. And the only way that I see doing it, other than online dating, is, is kill two birds with one stone. Per, per, pursue your hobbies and passions. I always say brainstorm. Quick as you can. I don't care if you want to go to Mars. You know, give me 50, 100 things. Sleep on it. Add to it. Whatever. Go back in two days and say, okay, you know, that's good. Pick 10. You know, pick 10. And then, you know, sleep on that. And then... Grab one or two and sign up. You know, this is part of goal setting. You know, this is the short-term goal to how I'm going to meet a great guy right here, you know. Pick one or two. You might hate it. 
you know, you might go, you know, um, rock climbing and, you know, or hiking and you, you don't like it, you know, whatever. You had a great experience. You got outside of your comfort zone. You built, uh, you, you gave yourself another confidence notch in your belt. You became more, more interesting. Then grab another one. But you have to do this every week. You've got to dedicate time um, and not necessarily, you know, compartmentalizing everything on your weekend. Um, and, and then before you know it, you've got this exposure. Now we've got some guys. It's like, well, you know, I got this, you know, they met this, you know, yada, yada. And now we start working on those individuals and how they mesh. And if this guy doesn't make the cut, bye bye. And you have no problem with it. You know, he doesn't, you're not depressed. Your confidence isn't, you know, beat up because he didn't meet your criteria because your boundaries were such. It's like, no, he's not for me. And you've got choice A, B, C, D. And, um, it, it just becomes so much easier, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 You've got to create opportunities for yourself to see and be seen by high quality men. If you want to meet one, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to get to the charities. I always like charities and wine tasting, you know, if you're, if you're, you know, drink or like wine at all, because it's just a higher quality, you know, uh, type of man. Again, I'm generalizing here, of course, but, you know, you know, we're not going to go to the bar scene anymore. You know, I mean, it, you know, I get at a piano bar or something like that. That's fine. Enjoy it with your friends, you know. But to me, you've got to look for those charities, those wine tastings or, or those um, those ski trip, you know, or whatever you're into. And it doesn't have to be, out, I say always say outdoors things, but it, it can be anything you want, you know. Um, and, and, you know, then it just, everything starts to fall in place when you start to do these things and embrace being single. It's really about embracing being single and living by your values and beliefs and, and checking off your bucket list. Think of it as a bucket list, you know, just, okay, I'm going to try this. I'm going to try this. You're going to love something and then get good at it. Um, I've got a client now. Um, a lot of my clients turn into good friends. Um, she's got into diving. Okay, she got out of a, a long-term relationship. I, I, I stopped her from pursuing all these loser guys she was going after. Um, she's, a, she's a psychiatrist. I mean, very high-value woman living in New York. And she, she got into diving because she used to be in it. You know, she used to uh, go diving with her ex. And she said, screw it. I'm going to, you know, we got her confidence up to the point that she went diving alone. I couldn't believe it. And now she's into diving. And she's meeting guys that are, you know, that are diving, you know, and it's just, it's just, it's wonderful. And it's, she's got choices and, you know, we're reviewing the choices and it's, it's fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's fun yeah. for, it's fun for yeah. her, you know, it's like, yeah, what, you know, what did Eric, how did Eric behave on that day? <laughs> so fun. Yeah. Well, and the other thing is when a woman is pursuing and participating in something she's passionate about and, th and she enjoys, she has sort of a glow or, a, or she's in her joy, she's in her natural joy, that is incredibly attractive. I've had a lot of men tell me that's incredibly attractive. It is. And if you're shy, it works out great. And, and if your confidence is a little low, it works out great too because you're doing something and you're both, you know, enjoy doing. You both sign up for this activity, whatever it might be. And you're doing you're doing it together, so you automatically have something to, in common and something to talk about. You know, it make makes things very easy. Mm -hmm. And then, Michelle, there's a whole other layer to this that I haven't mentioned. You know, it's it's you know, build yourself, understand men, find love, and the understanding men, which is <laughs> will take a whole other uh, uh, video. But once you have those things that I've talked about in place, then you move into another category. Now you can be dating men as you're into this category, but, but when you understand us and you understand how we love and you understand challenge and mystery and what's going in our head and how you can keep us pursuing, you know how to text us. You know, one of my big books, one of, somewhere around here, I don't know, uh, Power Texting Men. You know, when you know how to text a man you know, all these things fall in place because you're starting to understand how we, how our brain works. And now it becomes easier, okay? In my uh, night moves, my latest, The Science of Falling in Love, red, red lipstick attracts a man more than um, most anything you wear. And very few women know that. You know, they're shopping for shoes forever when they should be, you know, wearing that red lipstick. Um, 
there's five things that need to happen with, with anyone. Um, there's a study done by Dr. Perper back in the 70s where he analyzed thousands of people. And there are five things that have to happen for a person to basically walk away and have, you know, um, on a date or, or be together. And it's just amazing. And you can make these things happen. And the five things, if you want to know real quick, nonverbal. You've got to look across the room and smile at someone, okay? Verbal. There has to be someone saying, um, and there's different level of talking, but there there has to be someone saying something like, "Hi, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, you like um, piano bar too? I mean, what a great song, whatever." Um, number three, there has to be turn. When I say turn, there has to be the turning of the head, and then usually the shoulders, you know, for the people to come together, and then they engage in another level of talk. Okay, four, touch. Dr. Perper said there has to be touch, and it, it's a fleeting touch. It might be, he might touch you on the shoulder, or you might touch him on the shoulder. And again, you can do this, um, you know, on your own. You might just glance his hand. Um, and then the fifth thing that, that has to happen is synchronicity. And it happens naturally, but again, if a woman knows, you know, that about this science, you know, when a guy drinks a drink, a woman will drink her drink too. Or um, the band will play a song, and, you know, a, a louder set, and you'll both turn, and then you'll turn back. And these five things, this is research, this isn't just me talking, these five things had to happen. And now you start to understand this stuff, and now you can, you can uh, rank higher than this woman next to you because you know this stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got the confidence to execute this stuff. And, and, and now it's, you've got a huge advantage, you know, forget the looks, you know, you've got the huge advantage over this beautiful woman, you know, that, um, you know, it, it just doesn't have any inner game, you know, if you will. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I, yeah, it is. It's great stuff. And I yeah. really appreciate that you uh, gave us that little cherry on top of <laughs> you know, about all different tangents here. I get so excited. It's, <laughs> it's great because I think you're empowering women. You're giving women something tangible that they can yeah. walk away with, that it's not just all about focusing on finding the man. There's yeah. a lot you can be doing in your own life to build yourself, build your life, have that a great story to tell, and then you'll be attracting a higher level, a higher quality man anyway. So this is really empowering, and I really appreciate what you've yeah. shared. And, and real quick, Michelle, I know we're getting the end here. Um, and if you look at the women, some women and men, but women will just have it. You know, you probably know someone in your life that it's just like, why does she always, she's so bubbly and happy, and she always gets the dates, and it's not – that she's gorgeous necessarily at all. You know what I mean? It's just because she is bubbly. She is positive. She's busy. She's got the right attitude. She's not jaded. Guys know when you're jaded, you know, and, and that's what I'm talking about. You can create, you, you can become that woman, you know, that you hate. <laughs> Challenge yourself to, to be that woman that you hate because she's so bubbly and positive and, you know, the, the glass is always half full. And guess what? She gets the guys because she she is that person and you can be that person, you know, if you're not already or you're somewhere on your way or you're you, you don't know how to, you know, get to that level or or you're starting from scratch. You can be that person. I don't care if you're 65, you know, 70. I don't care. You know. Yeah. In fact, you just reminded me of something back when I was single. And in my early 40s, I was in this big singles organization here in, in our city. And there were these two sisters there, Greg, and you just reminded me of them. And they weren't the best looking women. I mean, they groomed themselves nice and they dressed nice, but they weren't really beauties per se. But the men were just falling at their feet. I mean, it was like a race for these men to ask them out. And I would look at these women and I would think, what is it that they have? And I've thought about that and remembered it for years because it, I just was bamboozled by it at the time. But as I look back now with now this hindsight and this new perspective that I have from doing this work now for a number of years, I recognize, first of all, they were women that really knew their own worth and their own value and really came across like, hey, I'm all that in a bag of chips, you know? I mean, that's just how they came across. And they did those five things you talked about 
with men. They had that way of making a man feel really connected to them when they interacted with them. Yeah. And then we can get into, you know, my book, The Social Tigress, um, you know, is about how to behave at a social venue. And this gets so fun. And just as you say, these girls, because you want to stand out. Okay, so maybe you're not the most beautiful woman there. Who cares? You know, screw that. But you can stand out. You need to stand out. So how are you going to do that? And that becomes fun. And like the women you talk about, I'll bet you that, you know, they were, they were smiling. Mm-hmm. Guys are naturally, people are attracted to people having fun. You know, when people are laughing, you will naturally be attracted to people that are having fun. You know, and not in an annoying way, but just laughing at each other, their own jokes. and you can use this to your advantage. You know, you can, you can do it alone, but you, it's better with a group of women, but you need to, now body language comes into it. You know, you need to be square. So many women will be huddled like kittens at a venue and you can't be like that. You know, you can be talking and engaging and laughing at each other, but you're square to the room. You always allow a place where a man, a man needs a home base and you always, are square to the room, you want to have a space next to you or in front of you or a chair next to you. And if you do, you'll men will come up to you. But you've got to create the atmosphere, the ambiance. You know, you've got to make it safe for a man. And then again, we got to start getting into the science of love and smiling um, and, and the different things you can do in eye contact, you know, uh, flight or, or fright. You know, eye contact, heavy eye contact, believe it or not, most women can't do it, but you need to do it. Make a guy look away. And if a guy looks back within like 10, 20 seconds, there's something about you that he likes, you know? If he doesn't look back, you do it to another guy. You know? <laughs> I mean, it's just exciting stuff. But this, these two women you talk about, you know, they probably didn't know any of the stuff that I'm talking about. They, like you say, they're just happy with themselves, they're comfortable in their own shoes. You know, another book of mine. Um, they, they're they're just comfortable, you know, and they're happy, and and they don't care if they meet another guy or not because there'll be another guy that'll walk up and talk to them because they are just you know showing their stuff and separating themselves from you know the 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 herd of other you know people. You know, so yeah, exciting stuff. <laughs> yeah, this has been so much fun and. Uh, as Greg and I said at the beginning, too, the fact that you're here shows that you are a woman of high value already. It's just you may have some opportunity to kind of up-level your game here a little bit or try some of these tips or ideas yeah. so that you're conveying it more. And yeah. I think that's really empowering. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. So, Greg, I know you have many books, and you mentioned just <laughs> of them and like I said wow I'm so impressed with what you've done with your books it's so amazing and I know you're helping so many people out there with them so thank you for the work you're doing in the world first of all and thank you for being a part of the event Greg and I are both sending you lots of love and best wishes and uh, look forward to connecting with you more bye bye for now